What is the most awkward thing you've ever accidentally said or done in a serious situation? You slash Arky underscore PG responded. I went for a bike ride in my neighborhood at about 12 at night a month ago. It was pitch black other than streetlights every five or six houses. I was kinda just zoning out, enjoying the fresh air, when something moved out of the corner of my eye. I turned my head to look, and I immediately assumed it was some kind of monster, I had just finished a horror movie, so I let out an extremely loud, blood-curdling scream in the middle of the night in a silent suburban neighborhood. The thing, which turned out to be a blonde soccer mom, screamed back at me, with pretty good reason. I zipped past her on my bike, yelling oh my god I'm so sorry over and over again until I got off the street. I haven't gone on a nighttime bike ride since then. You slash striking underscore reindeer underscore 2k responded. As a low-ranking team lead in a staff meeting, a senior manager started yelling and shouting at me. We had been disagreeing about a point of fact for half an hour. I heard myself tell him to go outside if he wanted to keep shouting. The room went silent. Real silent. I played the scene back in my head. What I really said. If you want to shout at me, step outside. He shut up. No one blinked. I pondered for a very long moment. Realized that nothing said was an overt threat. So I sat back down. He never shouted at me again. No one did. After lunch break, someone else brought up my data, proving I was right. No, he didn't apologize. It was a very good day. LOL. You slash star-shaped sand responded. I vomited on a patient we were transporting on the ambulance who was experiencing cardiac issues. Fortunately, he thought it was hilarious. As my crew took him in, and I started cleaning, wishing LD melt through the floor, someone opened the ambulance door. I just hear you puked on a patient. It was one of the ER doctors. I wished I could melt through the floor even more dearly as he went on to tell me that he'd done the same thing as a resident, but never met anyone else who'd managed that. As it would turn out, I was severely ill, with a disease that has vomiting with no prior warning as one of its symptoms. It would be months before that got figured out, though, and didn't make me feel any better about this call. You slash life's not perfect responded. I was in a finance-related meeting with my director and CEO. I suddenly had one of those sneezes that come out of nowhere with no warning. Didn't have time to cover my mouth, and to make matters worse I shot out a loogie, ball of mucus phlegm, right onto my CEO's boob. I wanted to die, but my CEO, cool as a cucumber took a tissue and gave it to me, while grabbing another and wiping my loogie off. She smiled at me and said you don't raise two kids without becoming desensitized to that stuff and continued like nothing happened. My director on the other hand started tearing up and his temple vein was bulging. I could tell he was trying so goddamn hard not to burst out laughing. You slash flutterflut responded. Eighth grade. It still haunts me. We had a girl in our class who had cancer. She missed a lot of classes and we were doing a collection for her. I think we were selling things to donate towards her medical bills. One day the teacher mentioned something going on on the weekend and I piped up but what about the collection for Robin? At which pointy the whole class gasped and shushed me. Robin happened to be in class that day. It was supposed to be a surprise. I covered quickly saying we were planning a visit to her hospital which she already knew about. The teacher said not to worry about it when I stayed after class and cried because of my big mouth. Robin died that summer, bravely asking that life support be turned off. Eighth grader. I think about her often. I'm still crushed I ruined the surprise. She didn't have a lot of good surprises left in her earthly life. And I ruined one of the last. It really does tear at my heart to this day. It's been over 30 years. You slash underscore Maxine underscore Vandate underscore responded. At the construction site, an apprentice had crushed his hand, don't feel too bad, he did a stupid thing as soon as he was left unsupervised after being told never to do the thing, so it was totally on him plus he did end up keeping the hand with at least partial function, and after he left for the hospital everyone else was ushered into a meeting to discuss it. The safety guy was Ikno, one Q of about 50, like most safety guys, ESL level command of the language though it was his mother tongue. So we were used to him saying Pacific in place of specific and so on. When asked how the young man was coping, he meant to tell us the kid got sedation as soon as he got in the ambulance, but what he actually said was something like, he was freaking out so bad they needed to seduce him on the drive to keep his mind off it. I looked like a total asshole snorting with laughter as a youngster's future hung in the balance. But I regret nothing. You slash Hartemez 17 responded. A college teacher of my came to school after her next door neighbor shot himself. She probably should have stayed home. 
she was very upset and during class instead of a regular class day she gave us details on how he was older and had ringing in his ear and it was bothering him and they told her he couldn't take it anymore. My classmates were asking her questions and she said he did it in the backyard and her backyard ring camera kinda saw some of what happened. Without thinking, I blurted out did you see any blood splatter or spray out? And she looked at me like I was crazy and said why would you ask that? And I immediately apologized. You slash Jwala 83 responded. Okay not as bad as many here but. In college I worked as an office assistant. One day I was tasked with tracking down the office's ice chest and bringing it back for an event they were hosting later. I found it in an occupied conference room, very important people in nice suits, holding a seemingly important formal meeting around a big oval table. I awkwardly and quietly tried to step in and drag the ice chest out from the corner, no explanation given. Unfortunately it was full of half-melted ice and a lot of water. When I finally got it to the doorway it got stuck and then dumped over. A fucking tidal wave of ice water spilled out over 25% of the room. I ran to the bathroom for a handful of napkins and feebly attempted to soak up gallons of water while they tried to continue their meeting. Eventually I panicked and just dragged the ice chest out. I stopped a janitor in the hall and said I think there was a spill in that conference room over there. Then hurried away. You slash Lake Street Jive responded. At my former company, the CEO was pushed into resignation after an acquisition. He had helped found the company and grew it from the ground up over 15 years. An all hands was organized to celebrate his career and possible retirement, wine, cake, and a large picture with signed well wishes, the whole nine yards of corporate party planning. He stood quietly as the room filled, taking in the sea of faces he had come to know over the years, readying himself for some tough goodbyes he was not prepared to have. Yeesh, who died? I quipped with a gentle nudge to his side. No response. You slash awesome source underscore 951 responded. I was at the Holocaust Museum in DC with my sister. There were several survivors out in the lobby sharing their stories. I am a very anxious person who tends to word vomit when nervous. We walked up to a woman because my sister wanted to talk to her. I kept a bit of distance because I was feeling so anxious to be in the presence of someone I deemed to be a hero for surviving the horrors of a concentration camp and having the courage to share them with us. After she gets done telling us about how she was the only survivor in her family, unfortunately most of her family had perished upon arriving at Auschwitz, she asked if anyone had questions. No one spoke up, so she asked again, making direct eye contact with me. I blurted out but where is your family, and she got this super sad look in her eyes and simply shrugged. I wanted to die. I apologized profusely and ran out of there so fast while my sister was dying of embarrassment. I hope that wonderful hero understands I was overcome with emotion and wasn't just trying to be a dick. I'm sorry, Esther. You slash key underscore nine responded. As a kid I would always laugh uncontrollably in serious situations. I remember at daycare I once got in trouble for doing something and sent to the office to wait for my mom to come and pick me up. The manager was scolding me and I just bust out laughing looking at her face all mean and angry looking at me. This happened at another daycare as well and the manager got mad at my laughing and grabbed my face firmly in her hand to force me to look her in the eyes. Another time our preacher randomly showed up during dinner time to meet with his congregation on a personal level and say a prayer for the families he met. He sat on the couch and my mom on the other, I sat in the chair across the room and he started his prayer. I remember it being so quiet and I just started laughing so hard I was vibrating trying to contain it. He stopped the prayer and just looked at me for a few seconds and then continued. Many years later when I first got married I told my wife about this stuff, we moved together to a new town and joined a church to meet new people. Suddenly me laughing during a serious situation came back. We were in church and a lady from the choir was singing we had made a joke about the Sunday after church the week before because of how she looks and moves when she sings. Well she did a solo song again the following Sunday and I started laughing so hard I started shaking trying to hold it in. The couple behind me thought I was so moved from the song and thought I was crying as they could not see my face place their hands on M's shoulders to comfort me but they did not know I wa cry laughing which made me laugh even more. You slash Bogan Otaku responded. Once when I was in high school, we had like an inspirational speaker come and talk to us about like life choices and the like. His thing was that he was an amputee who had lost his arm after getting so intoxicated he stumbled onto a train track and it got cut off. After telling his story he opened my year group up to any questions we might have had. Without missing a beat, my little autistic has put my hand up in the air and asked him if you could go back in time and change anything, would you do it? To his absolute credit, he didn't chew me out and answered my question in good faith.
It wasn't until after that my classmates rightfully pointed out I just asked a man who had his arm cut off would go back in time and do anything different. I wanted the ground to swallow me whole. You slash Leaky Aquitard responded. I used to live at a married university apartment complex where several apartment buildings shared a common space in between the buildings, we called it the court. It was a very, very social common area and in the summer everyone was out socializing, BB Ching, or playing with their kids in the court. One day I was out socializing in the court when I saw a new couple moving a couch from one apartment to their own. I went over to help them as it was an awkward sized couch for only two people to move. As we were walking the couch to this couple's new apartment, the former owner of the couch ran up to us with the cushions and as she put them on the couch one of them fell off. The one side of the cushion had a large, dark brown stain on it. Jokingly I said, did you murder someone on your couch Jane? She matter of factly responded, no, but I had our last baby on this couch. The new owners made awkward eye contact with one another, and in silence we awkwardly walked the couch to the couple apartment. You slash tripolar 3849 responded. Back in high school, one of the upperclassmen's dad died over the summer. His friends on the team organized a practice and just about everyone showed up in support. We did the usual, stretches and exercises followed by a run. At the end of the practice, he stood up to give a little speech. And like half a sentence in, my phone started ringing. I fumbled with it for what felt like forever trying to turn it off but, thankfully, one of the older kids sitting next to me was super fast and just reached over to hit the power button. I didn't even knew you could instantly cancel calls like that. It all happened super quick and I doubt anyone who was there even remembers, but I was mortified and still randomly think about it sometimes. You slash dear underscore aspect underscore 9886 responded. One of the most awkward things LVE ever done happened during a vacation. I was in a room with my cousins and friends, dancing and singing, when someone burst in and said, Tala, do you know how to swim? Your brother is drowning. I thought they were joking because my brother always messes around. I stayed behind, laughing, while everyone rushed to the pool. When I finally got there, I saw my mom in the water, panicking and trying to save my younger brother. She was crying, coughing up water, and desperate to jump back in. It was chaos, and as the oldest sibling, I felt this huge responsibility, but instead, I just stood there with my arms crossed, smiling awkwardly. I thought, oh my god, now my mom is going to hate pools, and we're never going to swim again, which was so selfish. Inside, I was screaming at myself, thinking, why the fuck aren't you doing anything, Tala? I was mad at myself, especially since I knew my other cousins would have jumped in without hesitation. People were helping my mom and brother, looking at me like, what are you doing? But I was frozen, dead silent, just watching everything unfold. I felt completely paralyzed and didn't know how to react. Afterward, I had to explain that I was just in shock. It was definitely one of the most awkward moments of my life. You slash Xuwildcat responded. It's 2003. I'm on loan to CENTCOM in Tampa in the run-up to the invasion of Iraq. I'm a junior army captain and one of my many jobs was running a daily VTC, video conference, with our forward element in Qatar to coordinate information operations. The senior person on our end was an ancient special forces colonel who was a certified badass. Think COL Troutman. Great dude. We are waiting for the start and he is on a rant because of some stupid stuff the administration wanted us to do. He starts on a trail of when I was in Mogadishu we did, stuff, and, stuff, so that, stuff. Without thinking I say yeah and how did that work out? Dude wheels on me and starts chest poking what the fuck did you say captain? I will kick. VTC started, thank god. We get through the entire hour and am just dreading the end with visions of how fired I am. We finish and disconnect. He turns to me and I'm thinking oh god, here it comes and he says actually it was a complete shit show. Nothing went well. Buy you lunch. Like I said, great dude. You slash Livingin Themidal responded. I worked as an after hours clerk in a small regional hospital, a tourist fell down the stairs from the plane at the airport and was severely injured and his family were called and originally they thought they were rushing into town to be with him but during their flight the man died. Because he died from a fall police had to be the ones to deliver the notification and two officers came and waited in our quiet room to do the death notice. They had been on duty all day and one came and asked me to see if I could find them something to eat. I got them some sandwiches and returned to the quiet room and wandered in announcing proudly, who wants a chicken sandwich, who wants cheese? Which was said simultaneously as, so it is with my greatest regret I must inform you your husband has died. That plays in my head a lot. 
I did not stay in the room I literally ran away. Thank you for watching. If you like this video you might enjoy the rest of my content check it out.